G'day everybody. Um, uh, I've got a bit of a difficult situation here. Um, I've been engaged in a losing battle for years and it um, now appears that decisions made by government agencies have been predetermined. So at the present time, I'm homeless. Um, I'm unable to approach police. I'm a rejected whistleblower and I've never been able to secure legal representation. I suffer from schizophrenia, ADHD, adjustment disorder, and a cognitive brain impairment. The impairment resulted from a suicide attempt in February 2021, and it was deemed lethal. It happened inside a hospital, but I was revived from certain death. Now, mental illness was not the cause of that. It was a protest against being vilified for mental illness and the conspiracy against me and victimization. Nearly three years later, I live in abject poverty. Um, while I was at the hospital, the Werribee Mercy Hospital and police oversaw the destruction of everything I owned and then I was placed in a homelessness shelter with only the clothes on my back. Um, I've narrowed down my victimisation to three possible points. The first one is my former partner was an ASIO agent who was a multimillionaire and exploited me and he owes me a substantial settlement which has not been possible to obtain. Um, he engages in family violence and coercive financial control up into the present day. He's a bit of a mastermind and no government agency will acknowledge the existence that that relationship ever existed. Um, the second reason is in 2017, I filed a complaint against a malpractice issue um, supported by a recording I possessed. Unfortunately, the evidence was detrimental to all parties involved and was, um, was not intended for extortion or financial gain. It was obtained to verify my perception due to the wide scope of my mental condition. The lawyer for the GP is an individual who informs government policy and advises the Ombudsman. He successfully silenced my evidence at the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the Police, IBAC, the Victorian Inspectorate, APRA, NHP, OPC, and the Ombudsman's Office, where now I'm classified as a rejected whistleblower and they refuse all future correspondence. The third reason um, I'm victimised is my public profile, which includes having schizophrenia because I wrote a book about it. Um, I've got a controversial PhD, over 30 years as an exhibiting artist. I've got a human rights award and I'm a former illustrator um, for the Herald Sun and the Age. And my public speaking after the book, um, advocating for mentally ill people and their caregivers, um, has not really yielded favourable outcomes to me because I was kind of exploited, but I've spoken all over the country. So my problem goes on. The Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet initially described my freedom of information as voluminous and complex. However, they later stated in defiance and with poorly veiled lies that no documents exist. And that's exactly how they want me to be. Um, my human rights abuses have been documented by my NDIS worker, but no one will acknowledge it. And the Australian Human Rights Commission, who is tasked to look at um, human rights abuses, has refused to investigate. I'm now banned at the Australian Financial Complaints Authority as a democratic citizen of the country. And I also lost over $1.5 million in my um, a, a conciliation at the Australian Human Rights Commission. And the conciliation was unfairly tilted in favour of the opposing side, which was my superannuation company. Um, in February 2021, I became ill at work um, because I was framed and because of my child sexual abuse case, which was thrown out by a magistrate. And my HCF private insurance, my income assist, was denied. They've now banned all contact and I have a staff member from HCF with an AVO against me, which means I could be arrested for even making a phone call or sending an email. The conspiracy to prevent the cause of justice goes to audacious lengths to silence me and to stop me. And my work cover case from the same injury was transferred from WorkSafe to Comcare because I worked for the NDIS. It was subsequently rejected by Paul Fowler and he was the former boss at WorkSafe on the grounds that I was not an employee under the SRC Act. I appealed it and it went to the AAT. This is years later. 
the decision there was ruled in the government's favour and that it was not fair, balanced or impartial. And moreover, it violated the Charter of Human Rights, which guarantees access to the law and equality before the law for disabled individuals such as me. So I wrote to the Prime Minister um, with all this stuff and he got back to me and he didn't intervene, but he did refer me to Mark Dreyfus's office, the Attorney General. Um, he, in turn, his office, directed me to ISIS, who investigate ASIO, and the Commonwealth Ombudsman to address the issues. But the Commonwealth Ombudsman has already rejected my public interest disclosures and refused, correspondence, refused, refused further correspondence, and AGIS already know about my former partner. So the Charter of Human Rights also stipulates that disabled individuals must be provided with reasonable accommodation, Yet the NDIS, which is responsible for people with disabilities, has locked away all my funds and refused a supported independent living application, and that's left me homeless. The government's literally abusing me. Um, they're making me homeless. Currently, I'm living um, rent-free as a guest of charity um, with my dog, and all my funds have been depleted. Um, due to my whistleblowing, because I've got a YouTube channel, my former partners apparently faced legal consequences for corrupt finances and embezzlement and he's had to pay over a million dollars. And he's also threatened, instead of taking responsibility, to blame me and he's threatened to kill me and my dog through a carriage service. Um, and that's why I'm in a secret location at the moment. Um, my computer and phone are hacked. Um, I can't get Facebook, I can't get LinkedIn, I can't get Twitter. And a company linked to the government maliciously destroyed my 20-year-old website, a company called Micron21. And there's been no recourse for that. That was my 20-year business website, the architecture of my business and my digital identity. But there's been no recourse at the telecommunications ombudsman, the small business family enterprise ombudsman, or business.gov.au. Malice now wears the face of the Australian government and I'm its unwitting victim and a scapegoat. Not a single person wants to stand with me due to fear of association with my case, and my reputation is now an infamous vagrant. Um, and the letters and emails and YouTube videos that I've done uh, to try and protest his treatment is <laughs> legendary now, that they all get ignored. Um, my question is to people who are watching the video, are you able to support me? Um, no one will listen to me. Now, some of my public interest disclosures were rejected on the basis of me not being a public official, except when the federal court rejected my public interest disclosure, they determined and were satisfied that I was an employee of the DSS. So, however, this did not sway the AAT in my work cover case. So if I appeal the work cover decision in the federal court, they've already stated that I was an employee. But um, I fear that the powers that be will find a way to circumvent justice. Um, and what's the value of facts when those in power possess money, privilege and enormous influence? Um, these powerful um, key political stakeholders have acted through proxies to systemically and politically deprive me of my rights, destroy my belongings, tarnish my reputation and incarcerate me as a political prisoner. Or as the police did, they literally got the Mental Health Act and they literally chased me out of town. Um, the police were well aware of my former partner's actions and the final and the consequences of that. And they, were, they well knew that we were together. The police protect him and all of the government protect him. And now he's threatened to kill me and I've got nothing. So, Currently, um, I wish to say I am a public official due to my past work. I worked as a nurse in a public hospital and I had a government contract with the NDIA. And um, my, my, my status as a former partner of a public official also qualifies me to make a PID. And so I responded to the rejection at DSS of my PID on those grounds. But the officer handling the PID case takes weeks to respond, and this is really an emergency disclosure due to the immediate threat to my health, my welfare, and my safety. 
I'd like some people to stand with me. I'm doing a GoFundMe. And um, uh, there's only three real ways that this can go. That I'll get a public interest disclosure and um, I'll be protected. Or um, or if, if I give up, I'm going to die. Like the three potential outcomes is victory with the government or a compromise. Or otherwise, I'll be falsely accused of a crime I haven't committed or I've already admitted to. Or dying. This is the outcomes for me. I'm a misunderstood person. I actually have been an advocate for um, 30 years and I've always put my heart forward and an honest narrative forward to try and help people. So I'm putting it out there today. I'm going to make a GoFundMe. Um, I've got nothing um, and I can't get a lawyer, I can't get a police and I can't get a whistleblower. My NDIS funds are locked up. I've got a mental illness and there's a conspiracy to prevent the course of justice. And my poor dog, Crystal, down here and me, are really suffering at the moment. I'm hopeful that you can help me. Thanks for listening.